Welcome back, MechWarriors. This is Obot10025, and this is the follow-up to the video I made a couple days ago, I think on Thursday or Friday, I forgot which, and uh, about the questions about me, about like anything you want to know about me. So here we go. I'll try to get through this as quickly as possible. So Simon C is, how do you pronounce Jaguar? Okay, I, per I did that one. So like unto Buddha, um, what are you getting me for my birthday? Nothing. Okay. 10025 is not my zip code. Give me your favorite FW decks. Um, I have to say the Uzeal, the Warhammer, the Marauder, and the Thunderbolt. That's my favorite one, actually. Uh, do you have a dog? No. Uh, I have cats, actually. I'm a, I'm a cat lover, but I do like dogs, too. Uh, if, you, if you hook a window AC and uh, to your PC, where cooler comes in hot air goes out to be finished, would that be great? Yes, during the hot, hot uh, times. I didn't do a lot of videos when it's actually during summertime because my PC overheats because my house captures heat and becomes a hot box. You know, not the druggy hot box, but just a normal hot box. And so my computer way overheats. And so I would love to actually have a have an AC unit. Uh, give us your in your story and how do you feel that by playing games and shooter games for years, that gives you an advantage? Hmm, that's a good question, actually. Uh, I don't think it gives me an advantage, per se, because I used to play Call of Duty a lot, and I couldn't actually get the hand-eye coordination down. So even though with the with the amount of years experience I had playing Call of Duty, um, uh, someone just knifed me just real quickly because my thumbs wouldn't actually hit the button for the knife button. I would have to say it doesn't really give me advantage. What really gets me advantage is I played a lot of board games and strategy games before computers. So, uh, so in essence, computers, they made it a lot easier for a lot of people to do. So like in a board game, I'm better at board games or, or turn-based strategy games than I am actually at other things. But when the Battletech game does come out and once I get you know, kind of used to it, I will actually be really good at it. So that's kind of like what my advantage, I guess, would be with experience. And that's with experience with anything. Um, yeah, definitely work on some more like on the Buddha and that was great, thank you. Uh, Biter, uh, if you're a battle mech, what battle mech would you be? Um, Warhammer. You were to going to get gunned down as a battle mech, what method would you prefer? Lasers, machine guns, LRMs, etc. Lasers, I guess. I, I, don't, I don't know. Since it doesn't exist, I guess lasers. Then lastly, after being gunned down, what would you most want happen to your components? Be salvaged by your kills, be burned, or be put in a museum? Uh, be put in a museum would be actually a lot better for me. I would actually love that, um, you know, for prosperity sakes of a, my down arm PPC will be in some type of like museum and my SRM-6 will be somewhere else or something like that. That'd be kind of cool. Um, this is from Team Redshirt. I think it's wonderful that you're doing this, Bob. I'm looking forward to some questions you can come up with. Here's my bit. First question. You have a lot of experience in Battletech universe. Have like you met a lot of cool people that had some awesome moments. Can you share with us your favorite memory of Battletech franchise? You know, um, I played with a lot of different people. I played with um, uh, just a ton of people, man. A lot of good people. Um, we had the same interests as far as like Battletech and everything else. But I would have to say that my greatest memory of Battletech itself was I was, God, I don't know how old it was. I was young, very, very young. And I would actually ride my bike like four or five miles to go to the nearest game store because I heard that the new um, Galator campaign came out for, for Battletech. And it's like, oh man, I gotta get this book. And so my biggest memory is actually going to the game store, five miles, order the book, right? And I got like 20% off like at the time. And so I'll wait like two to three weeks for it to come in. And then I'll ride my bike again to the game store and, and you know, say, hey, did you get it in? Did you get, it? you know, call up basically. And then write it down there. And then going through the game store, going through the books themselves and seeing all the great Battletech books and, and just the excitement you have as a kid of like, oh man, this book's come, this book's come out. This is awesome. I got to read this book, and you know, doing that kind of thing. And that's what my greatest memory. Okay, what made you decide to start your own YouTube channel? What are some of the challenges, obstacles that you encounter along the way? Have you had ever had a moment where you think, man, it's just not worth the effort? If so, how did you get past that? What made me start my YouTube channel is that I wanted to help people. Um, like I know, I you know, a long time ago uh, when I first started a YouTube channel, there wasn't really a lot of guides, a lot of. Uh, you know, hints and tips it was just like a bunch of like Vine videos, you know, type thing, you know, way back when. And, you know, kind of funny things and like prank videos and stuff like that. It wasn't really a lot of different things that, you know, hey, here's how you beat the boss for this. I mean, there were some, but not for the games that I played. And I think it was uh, Star Trek Online where I started. And I wanted to show people builds and how to do this and like, you know, what you should do. And here's the game and, you know, just different stuff like that. I wanted to help people like in their in their gaming. 
And that's kind of like, like, that's my personality, like, anyways. I, I've always been like that. Like, do you need some help? I'll help you. You know, because I know that um, when I first started gaming, when I first started doing things, it was great to have a mentor, a, 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 a person to help you out in the gaming experience. So you learn a lot more and then you become a better person. And that's kind of like why I started my YouTube channel. Uh, just to help people and you know like as you see a lot of my videos are about helping the community helping um like your builds and helping everything about your mech or your gameplay and everything else and your positive like attitude and that's what i like to do and that's why i kind of started my youtube channel and then it kind of blossomed from there pretty much to what it is now you know the first circuit podcast the uh, you know old bob's mech potato time is like i haven't really been working much in that but i'm showing like the community with like the uh, uh lore and personality builds and just different videos like that and i've been trying to help people like in gaming that's why i started it so just let you know that's that's why i started a youtube channel uh what are some of your challenges obstacles that you encounter along the way uh challenges um dicks basically a lot of you know, a lot of dicks online there, there's a lot of negativity in gaming a lot of negativity like in the youtube like you know like channels but a lot of cool people don't be wrong there's more cool people than there are dicks but unfortunately dicks and like asshats are you know become prominent trolls uh, that's one of the challenges that you have to do when you have a channel, a Twitch channel, or, you know, like YouTube channel and everything else. You got to deal with this kind of stuff. Normally, you know, normally if it's not too much of a dick, I'll go and engage them and, you know, say, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. Try to change their mind about who they are, you know, a positive attitude out of them. But sometimes you have to just, just, just delete them. Say, okay, well, just whatever. You're going to be a troll, um, you know, F you type thing. That's one of the challenges you got to really deal along the way is trolls that's really unfortunate though because they live in their mom's basement and you know eat bread and or eat cheetos all day you know, you know. <laughs> and pretty much you just have to deal with that kind of stuff and that's one of the things a lot of youtubers don't really talk about but they got to deal with this and, and also twitch streamers now about 90 percent of the people on twitch and youtube they don't actually uh they fail in like the first month because they don't see any aspect of like you know it's not giving you money it's not and, you know i'm not liking it because no one's watching my videos but you have to understand youtube and twitch it, it's a it's a old, it's a long time goal and you have to stick with it you have to you know basically hard hard times and not you got to stick with it you got to like over time you have to, to go ahead and just just trudge through man you got to go you, you have to do this because if not 90 percent of the people fail and that's one of the things i see a lot from new people and I, and i and i see this and i say hey don't give up don't give up it takes a long time okay have you ever had a moment where you think man it's just not worth the effort if so how'd you get past that i had a couple moments like that um i had a moment where i put my trust in a person and they had a radio station and basically that person turned out to be a backstabbing person and uh, then another person we had in our group turned out to be a psychopath and so, you know, basically you try to help these people and, and try to uh, be, be the good person. And that's, that's hard, man. It's really hard to actually deal with people a lot. You know, like you'll see, like a lot of times I'll just do stuff by myself because I just have that hurt that happened before. And I stopped for about two years. Um, like after that, you know, after these, like, you know, things happened, one, one with the radio station guy, I had a, had a fallout with him and he turned out to be a, just a, just a backstabbing, you name it type person. <laughs> And then the person we had in our group turned out to be a, a psychopath, um, pretty much. Uh, you know, we tried to help this guy. You tell him, hey, man, you know, basically you did this. He's like, no, I didn't. It's like, yes, you did, dude. I got him video. Still, I didn't do it. You know, just, just crap like this. You know, it just turned out to be a crazy person. And so, you know, you know, after that, I just like, I just want to do my own thing. You know, and, and a lot of times you, you get to a certain point where you put trust in people like granted like you're online like right now i got a good crew and everything you know basically about like you know hanging out and doing different things like aethermic and large and all these people biter and like everything they're really good people and and basically you know like but a lot of times as a youtuber um you know the, these things do happen and it's sad you know basically it's really sad and uh you know you have these falling out with different people and you put all these trust and like confidence in them and they use everything against you that's why I don't give out too much like personal like information if you do you guys do notice. But uh um it just kinda just personal. And I quit and I quit after that for about two uh for about two years and I just did my own thing. Played games and did like whatever worked on you know, like all that kind of stuff. So um and I and I was like forget it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do YouTube or Twitch anymore because this is just crap. You know, I get backstabbed like all the time. And so and how to get past that. Um I started up again. Um I don't know why I started up again. You know, actually, I just started and doing things and 
and said, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll get back into it. I want to go help people with videos. And so MechWarrior Line came on, my favorite franchise. Uh, grew with me for, what, over 35 years or something like that. So I like, jumped in and kind of said, okay, I'm going to go make some videos and help people. And that's basically like why I got back into it. And that kind of like what I got past. But it's hard, you know, it's hard being backstabbed by, by people, you know, having to deal with that kind of stuff. And, and, you know, it's just like, oh, man. You know, there's another time like, you know, lately, you know, a lot of times when you do YouTube channels, you sit there and go, man, my videos are getting crap. But you have to do it for your own personal self. You know, like I know I do uh, uh, Space Hulk, Die Space Monkeys and, you know, like basically that kind of thing. And I, and I do Space Hulk. It only gets like maybe 20, 30 hits like at the most. And so basically, but I do that for my own personal thing. I have fun doing it. And you have to look at a channel and, and look at a Twitch, Twitch streams as the fun you have in gaming and the fun you have in editing and the fun you have in doing this kind of stuff. And to also add to your thing, editing is why I love like YouTube as well too. Great, it, it like creates like a, um, a creative aspect that I can like get out type thing. But you have to do for the fun of, for the fun of doing it. And uh, uh, that's, where I, that's where I became now than what it was before. You know, and it was like a job. You know, now, now I mean, it sucks. So it sucks a lot of your time. It's a, it's a time pit. But I would have to say though, it's, it's a lot of. Um, God, I should do a video about this. This would be good. <laughs> but anyways, that's the reason why. You know, that's that's the reason why I like got out of it. Or man, it's just not worth it. Just worth the effort was back then, and then I came up. You know, came up again just because I wanted to go do do the fun of the gaming. So anyways, Wayne Duke says, "What will it take for you to be done with MechWarrior Online?" Hmm. Good question, actually. You know, I don't think I would ever be done with MechWare Online because A, it's free to play, so it's free. I have so much stuff for it, so I put in a, a lot of effort into the game itself. A lot of YouTube videos about it. Now, over time, though, I would have to say other games and other interests will, you know, draw me away, like Battletech and MechWarrior 5. Uh, they'll draw me away, or to other different games. Who knows what's coming out, though. So, I, I would never be done with MechWarrior. A lot of you with like I am with uh, Star Trek Online, because uh, I tried coming back to Star Trek and just turned out to be like, I played for 20 minutes, I'm like, I'm done with this, I can't do it. You know, but I don't think I'll be done with MechWarrior because it, it holds a special place in my heart. Plus the community is, you know, who I met through the community, Larish, Aether Mech, I mean, Biter, um, you know, Spectre, like everybody, you know, Ian, all these guys are pretty cool. And so basically I met a lot of good people, you know, Black Dragon and everything. I met a lot of good people. And so the community is what really brings me into the game itself. And so I don't think I'll ever be done with Beckwear like online. I don't know about you, but um, you, if you got hit by the apocalypse, Bob, but um, I got an ad for via jet air bikini flight attendants before the video. So, so they should be paying you big bucks. No, they don't pay me big bucks. I get hit really hard with the apocalypse. Pretty much my videos don't make nothing. And uh, basically, uh, um, that's because I like, ad block. And that's because I, some of my videos have been hit with the uh, with the bot and being demonetized because I have some, I say, a bad word in it. Or basically, my, my thumbnail has, you know, my latest one was a cops video. It says cops. And, and basically, dead or alive, you're coming with me. And I had to change the video. And now it's, now it's monetized again. Just stupid stuff like that. And I, I don't make much money like doing this to let you know. It's not, it's not for the money. You know, basically just to let you know about that. And I wish I got paid big bucks for having via jet air bikini flight attendants videos on my videos. So just let you know. <laughs> Aether mech, which urban mech are you most afraid of? Any urban mech, pretty much. They're really tough opponents. They're like mini atlases. More serious note, which mech do you think is the best overall? Um... You know, any mech is good. As I, as I noticed, Biter pretty much can use any type of mech and kill a lot more people than anyone who actually has experience and have a better mech. And so any mech is good as long as a pilot, you know, and that's one of the things that a lot of people don't understand is, is like situational awareness of a pilot is more beneficial than actually like if you have an Atlas or Huntington like mech, you know, type thing. So what is your favorite battle mech novel or arc and why? Um, I would have to say Wolves and Border for the simple reason is is uh, throughout the history books in 3028, I believe it's 3028, the Wolf Dragoons um, called out Karita and said, we'll fight you on misery. And so that and so the um, so that had like a full book of just a battle and it, it was just really cool and I loved it. Uh, how long have you been into Battletech as a whole ever since Battle Droids when it first came out at 30? Uh, no, in, not 30. Uh, in uh in uh, 1984, I think, um, it was Battle Droids and how do you feel about the Harmony Gold lawsuits? I hate it. I hate it with a passion. Because, uh, um, you know, like when I played Battle Droids, now the Droids thing was with the, um, with uh, Steven Spielberg, not Steven Spielberg. 
yeah, Stephen. Oh, George Lucas. Who was with George Lucas? Sorry, I had just watched uh, uh, Falling Skies and. Uh, George Lucas had droids, and so they had to ha actually go change it. And Harmony Gold sued them for the mechs, basically the Stinger, the Wasp, and the Battle, and the, the Warhammer, the Marauder, and all that kind of stuff. So they disappeared for years, <clears throat> for years. And so I was kind of pissed off about that. And Harmony Gold, they're just they're they're, they're like the locus of the online gaming community. You know, basically every time something pops up, they'll sue. You know, this is ours. They're not doing any, they're not doing anything with this franchise. You know, that's the crappiest thing about the whole thing. Which of the older parts of MechWarrior Online have you played? Campaign Online, which is your favorite part of the MechWarrior franchise? Um, I would have to say that my favorite part of MechWarrior franchise is, is the fourth succession war. Because that's what really a mass majority of Battletech was. Until the clans came, until the Jihad and Dark Age and all that kind of stuff. You know, past the clans, I don't really care about that crap. But, uh, um, but the whole thing is uh, like with the... Fourth Succession War going up to the 3050 War. That's what I grew up in. And that's kind of like what, um, that's my favorite part. Uh, the Ronin War, the Fourth Succession War, how it started, you know, just all that kind of stuff. And every different aspect and battle that was involved into that. Swish, if you could change one thing about the Battletech universe, what would it be? Um, God, that's a good question. Dark Age, um, he um, Hero Clicks. I would, I would, pff, that just killed it. You know, like if you watch one of the other videos, uh, pretty much that killed it for a lot of a lot of people. If you change one rule in Battletech to tabletop, what would it be? God, it's been a long time since I played tabletop, and it had a good group uh, a good group of people that I did it with. So, I I couldn't really answer the question for you because I got to reread the rules and figure out like what the worst thing about it is. Um, I always found that basically tanks were a lot tougher than battle mechs to tell you the truth uh they're a lot cheaper and i would feel it a lot more i'll rather have a regiment of tanks than a regiment of battle of, of battle mechs because it'll be a lot cheaper but that's kind of like what my own like kind of gripe was about it from skylane uh, i thought this one had had the answer um for the sake of everyone else my question is what does 10025 stand for okay so old bob pretty much stands for um when i used to play competitive pvp with with uh, battlestar galactica online and let me tell you that is the best space simulator you could ever imagine about having pvp uh, you know as far as fighters and you know just everything it was really cool i played that for about three or four years and um and basically i was a viper pilot and so i, I was i forgot like what my name was triskin or something like that and then i wanted to become a, a, a cylon and i want to create like an account so I needed a name, uh, a robot name. So I went through all the different robot names, like RTD2, C3PO, like all that kind of crap. I wanted some type of name, so you know, recently watched a black hole. So I liked old Bob. Old Bob seemed like a uh, a aspect of like, okay, old Bob, old. I'm pretty old, like as far as gaming wise. Uh, Bob is Bob, I, I guess. And then uh, um, so I cool. I'll do old Bob. So so then old Bob, I I did old Bob for for the silence, and I had a great time. Did some cool things. Had, had a great time with people. That was Old Bob. <clears throat> so then I tried Old Bob in another game. I forgot what game it was. And Old Bob was taken. It was Star Trek Online, actually. Um, old Bob was taken. So that's like, crap. Okay, Old Bob 1. Okay, Old Bob 2. Old Bob 5. Old Bob 10. I tried all these different names. Wouldn't work. So I'm like, crap. Okay, screw this. I said, Old Bob 10025. And boom, it popped up. Ever since then, every game I have is 10025 or Old Bob 10025. That way, it's a name gonna be through every game I do. Um, and you know, it go it went from there. That's the reason why I have Old Bob 10025, Old Bob from the Black Hole movie franchise from Disney, and 10025 because I got pissed off and said, okay, fine, I'll just do 10025, and that's that's how I got my name. Uh, this is from Telmo, a really good person I know. Uh, if you could implement something in a mech warrior line, what would it be? Scrap faction warfare and make it into a net battle tech. Period. That's it. <clears throat> I I think a lot of people would love it. It's a lot more complicated than the lazy version of net battle tech or lazy version of quick you know quick play basically. But if they implemented just a slight thing from net from net battle tech, that'll make faction warfare a ten times better. And basically, just scrap it. Just, just delete it, and then start over. Because right now, it is just junk. It's just crap. You know, basically, some people do like it. Don't get, don't get me wrong. Don't get your manios like in a bunch. Some people do like it, so enjoy it. You know, don't get me wrong. Enjoy the stuff. People like games for different reasons, and then, there you go. But my thing would be just scrap it, and then start over with Net Battle Tech. When you retire, do you consider becoming a full-time streamer and content creator? I don't think I'll retire with this, <laughs> to tell you the truth. I do it for fun. You know, I do it for to help people. I do it to, uh, 
uh, for the creative outlet that I like to do. And it helps, it helps me more, more than anything else, you know, basically as far as like getting stuff out there and like, okay, what can I do? You know, while I'm working my humdrum, dumb, stupid job, I work, but I got to go pay my bills. It basically, you know, during that time, I think, okay, well, how am I going to design this video? What are the aspects of it? You know, how am I going to edit the video while, you know, just while I'm working. So that's all on my mind while I'm working. That kind of helps me. And then I come home, go edit it out, pop it out. And it's like, cool. You know, I did something, you know, type thing. And I don't think I'll retire like with this. So, you know, full-time streamer, it takes a long time to be every single day, constantly making videos every single day, constantly uh, doing, a, um, you know, streaming a game, you know, constantly. And it's like, I don't have time for that, man. You know, I got to feed my family. I got to spend time with my wife. I got to, you know, feed, you know, I got to do stuff around the house. I got to drive to work. I got to go to work. I don't have time for that kind of stuff. You know, a lot of people do. And, you know, granted, if it'll be cool, I guess. Jen Jensen says, what is your main in-game time related to CET? I have no clue what CET means. So my in-game time pretty much is a lot because uh, um, I can't count the time I played with, uh, with the normal client, but then I went back to the Steam client because I'm using something for it. What is your, okay, this is from um, Microbus. What is your favorite Intersphere build and heavy that's conventional thought as a bad mech? What is your build for it? Now, I like the Uzeal. A lot of people don't like it because of the big right and left hand torsos, but I have a great time with it. A lot of fun, and my build is uh, um, four medium lasers. This is for the Bilal. Four medium lasers and two MRM 20s, and it's just, it works great for me. Now, every mech, like I said before, like in, in, the, in the questions down below, is it depends on the pilot. You know, some people can can run this mech. Some people can't. Um, some people can run a Locust and do really good at the Locust. And some people can't. The Locust is considered like a bad mech. But it just basically it's how you run the mech. How, how you see things like in, you know, like in the game. That's my build for the Bilal. And it's actually, I love playing the thing. And I think it's a good mech. The other thing is the Arrow. Basically Blackjack-like Arrow. A lot of people don't like it. I run two ER mediums, a large pulse, and uh, what, six machine guns. Six light machine guns. Great mech. I love it. I love playing that thing. Okay, flying spaghetti monsters, chupacabras, ghosts, or extraterrestrials, or a religion. Hmm. I'll have to pick flying spaghetti monsters. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm not going to get in real life religion. People get all butthurt and get their pantyhose like in a bunch, basically. I'm not going to get into that crap. So, um... <laughs> Good question, though. I do enjoy it. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> Headbiter. Uh, girlfriend wants to ask, what color are my socks? They are white with uh, gray tips on the heel and the toe. And basically, that's uh, that's the color of my socks. So I want to go appreciate everyone who asked the question. Thank you. And hopefully you do enjoy the video. Uh, I had a great blast, like, making it. Like, actually, I'll do this every couple months or something. If you guys want, uh, just let me know, you know, who knows, but, uh, thank you. You guys are great. You guys are a great community. And I do appreciate that. Uh, just everything you guys do are just awesome. And, and just give yourselves a pat on the back, man. You guys are one of the greatest people I've ever known in my gaming experience. That's a long time. And that includes board games before computers came out. So <laughs> thank you everybody. You guys have a good night and I'll see you on the battlefield.